Hey guys, it's Josh from ThroughMyLens.com and this is Route 66 in New Mexico. My goal for this video series was to record my dad and I's trip on Route 66 in June of 2019. If you want to see the previous videos on California and Arizona, click in the description. Again, I tried my best to get all the facts straight, but I may have missed a few things, and here's what we saw on Route 66 in New Mexico. It was late in the day on our fourth day of travel when we crossed over from Arizona to New Mexico. Leaving Arizona and entering into New Mexico. We only drove about 25 minutes over the border to get to the town of Gallup and our hotel, the El Rancho. This hotel was one of the most unique places we stayed on our entire Route 66 journey. It opened in 1937 and many famous guests stayed there over the years. It still has a lot of that old charm and it's become a landmark on Route 66. Made it to Gallup and to our hotel, the El Rancho. That is the end of day four. Starting day five and we're leaving Gallup and going to Santa Rosa. Shout out to the El Rancho Hotel. It was a cool place to stay. After leaving our hotel, we backtracked to downtown Gallup, grabbed some coffee cake, walked around the downtown a little bit and then headed on. Most of the early part of this drive was spent paralleling Highway 40 on Route 66. We made it to the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide in New Mexico is a small town with a trading post and it's the area that splits the water that flows to the Pacific Ocean from the water that flows to the Atlantic Ocean. Just in case you need some uh, fireworks on your drive. From there, we headed to our next stop, Grants, New Mexico. This is a drive through sign and supposedly at nighttime it's neon. We drove through the sign and explored the surrounding park and then went over to the Mining Museum which is the most popular stop in this town. The Mining Museum is actually a really cool stop on Route 66. It talks all about the area's history of uranium mining, showing you the process that they go through to get the uranium, and even having a downstairs basement that features a walkthrough mine showing the entire process in an interactive exhibit. Driving east from Grants, we made it to one of my favorite gas station signs that I saw in New Mexico. And then we continued on to the ruins on the western outskirts of Cubero. Not much is left of the ruins anymore, so we just walked around a little bit and then continued on. On the way out of Cubero, there's a cool old trading post, but there's not a lot on this stretch of Route 66 to see. Heading on, we made it to Dead Man's Curve, which was an especially dangerous part of Route 66 because of the 100 degree curve and the deer that would often cause traffic to go off the road. Also, right near Dead Man's Curve is a rock that resembles an owl. This rock is known as Owl Rock. Do you see it? Let me know in the comments. We're getting close to Albuquerque and this is the Rio Puerco Bridge. You can see why they don't let you drive on this bridge anymore. This truss bridge was built in 1933 and was a part of Route 66 all the way until it got realigned to Highway 40. You can still walk on it today and it's a good stop as it's a beautiful old bridge. This is the Enchanted Trails Resort right outside of Albuquerque, home of one of two stamps for New Mexico in the Route 66 Passport Stamp Book. I probably wouldn't have stopped here if it didn't have a stamp for the book that we were collecting, but it did have a nice outdoor area with some old cars and old airstreams that you could see. Next we made it to the city of Albuquerque, stopped to see a few historic signs, and then went to the downtown area known as Old Town Albuquerque. Old Town Albuquerque has a beautiful plaza area with lots of shops surrounding it that you can walk around and see. There's also restaurants and a beautiful old church on the plaza as well. San Felipe de Neri Church was built in 1793 and it's one of the oldest surviving churches in the city. 
It's been in continuous use for over 200 years and it's open to the public daily if you want to walk in and see it. Our next stop in the area was a little bit different though. In Old Town Albuquerque, definitely stop by the Rattlesnake Museum. Sure, this museum doesn't have anything to do with Route 66, and I had no idea that it was even there before I visited, but who doesn't want to see the world's largest collection of different types of rattlesnake species all in one little area? My dad and I had a blast walking around and checking this place out, and it's definitely worth the price of admission to see the snakes and to get a certificate of bravery at the end. For lunch, we headed over to the Dog House in Albuquerque, which was one of our favorite food stops on the entire route. This spot has been making killer chili cheese dogs at its current location since the 1960s. This is the best hot dog in New Mexico. Not just saying that for the video. 10 out of 10? 10. 10 out of 10. Gotta see if Pops is actually telling the truth or not. I like good hot dogs. Spicy, good chili. I agree. If you guys like chili dogs, don't pass this place. It is so freaking good. From there, we made it to the heart of Albuquerque where a lot of the Route 66 stuff is no longer there. There's 12 of these statues on Old Trails Highway, only two of them on Route 66, and this is one of them in Albuquerque. The 12 Madonna of the Trail statues are dedicated to the spirit of the pioneer women in the United States, and they go all the way from California to Maryland. There's also a fun old Route 66 diner that you can see and eat at on the way out of town, but as you can tell from the previous clips, we had already had lunch. It was worth stopping by to see it though. Alright, so from here you have to decide if you want to go to Santa Fe or not. If you do, it's about two hours out of the way and that's without stopping to see anything. That being said, if you have at least a half day, I love going up to Santa Fe and seeing all of the historic stuff they have in that city. Some of my favorite spots in Santa Fe are the Santa Fe Plaza, the Loreto Chapel, and the Pecos Historic Park. Plus, not Route 66 related, but if you have kids, you should definitely go to Meow Wolf as well. You can see all of these recommendations in the Santa Fe video I made in the description, but now back to my dad and I's drive where we left Albuquerque and went straight to Santa Rosa. After leaving Albuquerque, there wasn't much to see basically all the way to Santa Rosa. That's why I recommended that if you have the time, you should go up to Santa Fe and do that route as there's a lot more to see up there. All right, it's six o'clock at night. We just got to Santa Rosa to the blue hole. It's still 93 degrees, so we're gonna jump in the water even though it's 61. The blue hole of Santa Rosa was a welcome spot for many overheated Route 66 travelers. The 61 degree water is still a really popular spot for people in New Mexico to visit, and it's one of the top places to learn how to scuba dive in the United States. We were just there to jump off the cliff into the water though. Yeah! This is way colder than I anticipated it being. <laughs> That's enough adventure for today. Back to the hotel, end of day five. Day number six, we're leaving our hotel in Santa Rosa with the end goal being Amarillo, Texas. Before leaving Santa Rosa, we're stopping at the Route 66 Car Museum. This museum is a lot bigger than it looks from the outside and it probably has 30 to 40 old vintage and unique cars for you to see. Neither my dad or I are big car buffs, but we both really enjoyed the museum. I've been to a lot of auto museums, but I've never seen this before. From there, we stopped in the ghost town of Cuervo, which was a railroad town and then became a Route 66 stop before Highway 40 bypassed it and it became a ghost town. Of all the ghost towns we saw on this route, this one definitely had one of the most ruins for you to explore. 
Driving on, we got to another ghost town in the town of Newkirk. Check out this old service station in the ghost town of Route 66. This is truly a barren section of Route 66 and it really shows you how Highway 40 devastated some of these small towns. A little while later we saw another ghost town with a few more buildings that had been left in disrepair. Look at the adobe construction on this old building. Pretty crazy. Where's the cold beer at? Promise me cold beer. Leaving the ghost towns behind us, we made our way forward to Tucumcari, one of the favorite towns for Route 66 travel in New Mexico. During this section of the drive, this is one of the towns you want to plan to spend the most amount of time, plus it's a good place to spend the night as well as they have a lot of old, historic Route 66 hotels and motels. Made it to Tucumcari, which is a popular Route 66 town. First stop, the museum. Like I said previously, most of the major towns on Route 66 have a museum. We tried to stop at all of them, and this one was especially cool because of the photographic exhibit they had. It's up to you how many of these you'll want to stop at on your drive on Route 66 though. <laughs> Check out this old sign, you can still see a piece of it that's fallen down right here. Tucumcari has a lot of nostalgic Route 66 to see, from old signs that are still in good condition, to retrofitted gas stations and even trading posts. I got a chance to chat with the motel safari owner and he was a great guy who shared the love for Route 66 by buying a motel and making it more modern and exciting for guests to stay at. Heading a few blocks down the street will take you to the Blue Swallow Motel which is an iconic neon sign on Route 66 that's popular for photography. Unfortunately we were there in the middle of the day so we didn't get to take any pictures of it at night. And also, when I called to stay there, it was booked up as well, so if you want to stay at this iconic hotel, you definitely need to book it in advance. Before you leave town, this is a great spot to check out. On the way out of Tucumcari, definitely stop by TP Curio's shop. It has a lot of fun Route 66 memorabilia, plus it had a passport stamp and another penny smash machine. Basically the rest of Route 66 in New Mexico is the same as the earlier part of the day, with not a lot to see other than some abandoned gas stations and ruins. One of the coolest parts if you want that real historic Route 66 vibe though is from San John to Glen Rio. We didn't even realize that this is the dirt road portion of Route 66, but getting to cross some cool bridges, a lot of fun. This section is 14 miles of dirt which goes through old homesteads and over old bridges. You can see the highway way out there, but we are on original Route 66 dirt road. For both my dad and I, this was one of the coolest sections in the state as it gave you a real feel for what Route 66 would have been like for the early travelers. It's not for everyone though, and if you want a faster trip, you probably want to skip this section and just stay on the highway. That's it for our time on Route 66 in New Mexico, and you can see the Texas video next week or in the description if it's already been posted. Thanks so much for exploring with us, and go to ThroughMyLens.com for more information on all of these Route 66 spots.